hello guys welcome back so in this video we are going to see the another question third question that we have given in the contest 3250 find the count of monolithic pairs so we have already seen the snake problem then count the number of good nodes now we are going to see the 3250 so i have already already uploaded a snake problem and count number of good nodes so please go and watch this video and let's see this problem so in this video we have given a, a, a problem statement and problem statement is saying that we have given area positive integers uh, given the length uh, n and we have a pair of non-negative integers array n1 and n2 the monolithic we have given and then we have given the uh, length of both the sizes right so we'll take uh, two uh, array n1 and uh, array 1 and array 2 and array 1 is a monolithic non-decreasing in other words we can say array at 0 is less than array at 1 and so on we will take right so similarly we'll take array 2 it is also monolithic and similarly but it's a uh, greater than it's uh, uh, first value is greater than the second value like this we have means another one is in decreasing another uh, increasing we can say that right then we have uh, we have to do plus and we will get our num of i and for all 0 to i we have to go and minus 1 we have to go and then we have to return the count of monolithic pairs that we will see here and then uh, since the answer may vary in the return so we'll take a modulo of 10 to the power 9 plus 7 we can take like this right means uh, to solve this problem we need to uh, uh, count pair of uh, you can say array array 1 and array 2 because array 1 is monolithic non-decreasing and array 2 is monotonic non-increasing you can say right so for each i the sum of array at i you can say here right we have to take what uh, we have to check the value right for each index you can say for uh, you can see here right for each index what we will do array of uh, i 1 and array of 2 i you can say if it uh, are equals then we will say uh, if it is equals right uh, after the sum right then we will say it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, it's will come into the number of i right and then we have to count the value so uh, as you can see here like these given constants are, we have given right so uh, we will if we will go with the brute force approach that generates all the possible pair of uh, array 1 and array 2 and uh, would be inefficient due to you can say high number of potential combinations right so instead of we need to uh, more efficient approach we have to go like we will count the valid pairs directly and then we will move so what we can do will uh, what we can make up in the approach right we'll go with uh, we'll we'll try to find a prefix and a suffix uh, arrays and we'll use the prefix and uh, sum we will do the we will use that prefix and we'll try to make all the sums to uh, compute the number of valid non decreasing array 1 and array 2 we can say and uh, for one will take a prefix one will take suffix you can say after because uh, we are not going to do a sorting and those things right so we'll take like this right then we can <coughs> think about the dynamic programming or you can say or or, uh, or you can say uh, uh, combinational right uh, counting you can say uh, we can do that right we will make all the combinations and then we can do counting so for each uh, possible value array at i we will uh, compute how many valid non decreasing sequence can be performed with the uh, value of uh, uh, value uh, in the array i and uh, similarly for the uh, array 2 i okay and uh, what we will do so first of so how we are going to implement first of all we'll uh, count num non decreasing arrays then we'll count non decreasing array right because why we are going to do so when we are going to count the non decreasing array right arrays so we will use dynamic programming to count the number of uh, valid non decreasing arrays up to each possible uh, some value or if uh, we are going to count non decreasing array similarly we'll use the dynamic programming and we will count the number of uh, non increasing array up to each possible some values right so what we will do after that once we will do that uh, dynamic programming we will combine that result and we'll uh, check the we will we will to find the each possible uh, pairs right and if the pairs are there then we will use that result we will combine that re result from the prefix and suffix and we will count uh, we will make it count right so let's go uh, uh, to see as we have the constant we have given we were taken 10 to the power 9 plus 7 and then we will take a memo this is for the dynamic programming and uh, for that we will initialize first of all it's dynamic programming we'll take a uh, fip, uh, it's a size right and we will initialize the uh, table right we'll start the uh, dfs approach uh, for the first index and then uh, we'll keep adding the value right first we will take here as an index then we'll take its uh, prefix one and then we will take for the prefix two means from number one and uh, uh, array one and array two we'll take right now what we will do <coughs> 
sorry will uh, uh, create this function right as you can see a number we have taken index we have taken and for each index i we will take prefix uh, 1 and prefix 2 from array 1 and array 2 so now the base condition is that uh, if we process all the indices we will return the valid configuration means if the index is equal equal to the length means we have to return one otherwise what we will do we will return the result if uh, the sub problem have been solved right or not so what we will take memo at index pre pre one if not equal to null then we will return index and it's a, 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 a prefix value from array one and then we'll take the count okay and then we will iterate over the possible values of array at index what we will do array at one uh, will uh, the, the value we will take and we'll check the on the pre it is the previous value if it is uh, equal to right then we'll check right so array two will check uh, what we will do first of all we'll start from here right so the value that we have taken is from the prefix one right so we'll keep checking into the uh, nums at i nums at i will do minus one and this this is the value 2 that we should have into the uh, array 2 we can say right now what we will do we'll keep checking the current configuration is valid or not if it is valid then how we're going to check we'll check the con index should not be equal to 0 and the uh, uh, you can say value at a2 is less than equal to previous value of a2 right because a2 is always greater than the next is next value right in the previous uh, nums 2 right and then we'll count the value right to count the value we have to pass two things right the first will uh, make a dfs of the uh, it's the next value that we have get the value from array 1 and uh, array 2 and uh, another value that we have taken index plus 1 it will uh, increase to go to the next index and the num element so we'll keep uh, moving to the next dfs right D uh, we will traverse to the next node and uh, next element we can say and we'll take the count also we'll keep uh keep adding into the count and we'll take the mod and once your count will have for all the uh, i then we will put into the uh, count you can say we will put onto the uh, memo table right and once it is there right so we will uh, check again we'll go to check if the value is not null means we have already calculated and we'll return it uh, here if it is not calculated we'll keep uh, iterating in the possible values of array one and similarly we'll go to the its configuration is valid or not we'll keep checking its current configuration if it is there then we will uh, find the uh, count and we'll keep updating the memo table and we'll have the data if it is not there right so finally we'll have the result uh, count and we'll return the data uh, count you can say right so please ping me in the comment box the time complexity and space complexity for this problem and uh, if you have any doubts so please ping me in the comment box right so what we have done in this problem right so first of all we have to focus on uh, the prefix and suffix count right and the prefix and suffix count uh, uh, in the array right arrays uh, count number of ways we have to create for valid uh, array 1 and array 2 as you can see here right and then uh, we have to keep uh, updating the counts once the com combinations are uh, calculated right so how we are going to calculate so combinations uh, functions that we have to see how it will calculate so we have to check the number of uh, ways to choose uh, let's suppose k element right from the n element with the repeat repetition allowed like the starts or bars let's suppose right like that we have to keep updating like that if you understand the problem right so combinations functions will calculate the number of ways to choose k elements from n elements with a repetition allowed okay so uh, then in the final result we'll keep uh, updating the memo table and for each number in the nums we will combine the count for the uh, prefix right as you can see here we will combine that and then uh, uh, once the count is combined with uh, from the prefix count and the suffix count will uh, will find the number of valid pairs so i i hope this solution uh, efficiently computes the uh, count of monotonic pairs by uh, combinational counting or modular ar arithmetic that we have applied right here with the mod right and then we are uh, getting the value here okay so i hope this video you like this video and it's a uh, easy uh, attempts you can do by your own just you have to find the uh, prefix and then you have to keep updating the value the whole logic is here right whole logic is here you have to take the value and you have to keep checking uh, the prefix and we have to find the count here okay let's move let's let's move to the next problem that we have and please ping me the comment box uh, the time complexity and space complexity i'll see you there thank you guys thank you for watching this video